Nemanja Maksimovic is the latest player to be rumored uh, with a move to Red Star Belgrade. How realistic it is, I'm not so certain yet. Uh, at a transfer market worth of 10 million euros, Red Star is said to offer uh, 2.5 million euros, if you believe what you read, um, for the central midfielder. It, he would be the most, that I think back, I haven't really looked it up, but I think he would be the most expensive player that Red Star has brought in. We brought in brought in guys like Filippo Falco for 2 million. I think Osman Bukhari was about 2.1, 2.2 million. So uh, Maksimovic would be the most expensive uh, signing in club history. So to kind of go back a little bit now, um, he is a player who came through the Red Star Academy and then his contract was terminated. And from there he went to Domžale, which is a club in Slovenia. And then he went to Astana, which is in Kazakhstan. And then for the last number of years, he's been in Spain playing for Valencia and Hetafe. I believe he's been at Hetafe for four or five years now. He's played close to 150 matches, if not more. So that experience in La Liga obviously will be huge for him. Uh, any international experience really is more than welcome at the club, especially for players who are of a Serbian background, which is, if you believe what you hear within the club, the club wants to bring in players who have a Serbian background, who have experience. And the interesting thing is, if you ask me the last five or six months, if I could pick a defensive pivot that I would go with, who, you know, players who currently don't play for Red Star, I would have actually picked Nemanja Maksimovic and Luka Milivojevic, just because Luka is someone who's at the club as well, and he and he loves the club, so I would welcome him back with open arms. Uh, Nemanja Maksimovic is still only 27 years old. He turns 28 in January, I believe, so he's still in his best years and in the prime of his career. Um, you know, not even touched 30 yet. Uh, he's had 43 caps for the national team, so he has experience at that level as well. He had experience with the U19s, the U21s. Uh, the U19s is where... Um, you know, Serbia won in, in New Zealand, they were crowned champions. That was kind of like his emergence. Uh, he assisted for the game-winning goal in the final. And it's been, it's been kind of, that was his kind of rival on the scene, if you want to, if you want to say that. And like I said, he's had a really good career uh, internationally playing in La Liga. I mean, you have to be a really good player to survive in the Liga for, you know, eight, nine years now. So, and he's done that very well. Um, his current contract runs until 2024 with um, Hitafe, so we'll also see how that kind of works out and with the market value of 10 million and the contract for still two years it'll be interesting unless they really want to offload him unless they want to bring in someone who's gonna kind of fill his spot and they think that they could do a better job than than Nemanja then I could see them maybe offloading him uh, for only 2.5 million but it's still very weird that he's worth 10 on the market and that they would let him go for 2.5 I mean that's that's a lot of that, that's a huge difference, right? It's not like he's someone who's worth four and you sell him for two and a half. But anyways, um, he's a CDM or a central midfielder. He has played some attacking midfielder, but a CDM and, and just a central midfielder, I think is his best role. Uh, it's where I've pretty much watched him his entire career. I know he's had some attacking midfield roles. I think it was with Hitafe. Um, and he's actually, when you look at the statistics, he hasn't been that bad. I think in 17 matches, he has something like four goals and an assist. So... Maybe it's something that the team can explore going forward if he does sign with Red Star. Although I think he's better in that um, CDM, CM role. So what does this basically mean for the rest of the guys on the Red Star roster? So guys like Sekou Sonogo, whose contract expires very soon. You have guys like Gelor Kanga. You have guys like Rijeko Nikolic. Um, Nikola Stankovic, would, I would think, would go on loan. Um, you know, what happens with guys like Veliko Nikolic, who the club is very big on, who suffered through some injuries... And it's kind of held him back in the last three or four seasons. But what happens with him? Does he maybe go out on loan? Does the team sell him completely? Kings Kangwa has recently arrived. So I don't think, you know, we're going to look to offload him. Uh, he's only been at the club for like six, seven months now. Um, so we'll see what that means. But I think Seiko Sonogo is the one name that you kind of look at and say maybe he's not back. And there were some talks about about a month ago that they Red Star could look to renew his contract for at least another year. Um, that's kind of stalled a little bit now, and we haven't heard too much about that, so we'll see what ha what happens with that. Uh, in terms of Nemanja Maksimovic's play, covers a lot of ground. He's he's a bit of a pest. He's kind of hard to get rid of. 
Uh, and the team needs a real central defensive midfielder. Like I said, we whiffed on um, Aro from from uh, Sheriff. We've kind of, I guess we've given up on him now, even though the team said that they were going to renew uh, their interest in him, which looks like we're not going to explore that anymore explore that anymore uh so i think nemo maximo which would be a good replacement blocks a lot of shots has a lot of interceptions and i think in front of the back line i think that's something that you really need uh technically he can do some things uh he can get open in wide areas good crosser of the ball so you know a little bit of everything but i think all in all as a as a transfer i would really like to see this because I think the international experience does a lot for a player, especially coming back, especially at an age 27, 28, when you still have a lot to give. I think that's a very good thing. And never got a chance with Red Star when he left. He left as one of the, I believe at the time, one of the biggest academy players. Like in terms of uh, the guys in his age group, he was one of the better players in that in that age. And he never just really got a chance, got released. And, you know, he found his way around. Went to Slovenia, went to Kazakhstan, maybe not the conventional route. And then, which ultimately led him to uh, Spain, where he's been for, for a long time. And I think the, the transfer of him from Valencia to Hitafe was around 10 million euros. So, you know, it just shows you how um, if you stick to it and you never give up, you know, you could ultimately make your dream come true. But yeah, overall, I, I would really like to see this, uh, this transfer happen. And I think this is kind of the team preparing for next year, whether we go straight to Champions League or if, you, if we have to qualify bring in players bring in players who have played for the national team and bring in players just who, who internationally have played for in in big big clubs big leagues and we hope that they can bring in some of that um talent experience back to the club and just kind of settle things down which we've we've had a little bit of an issue with this season um and yeah just get back on track and uh make champions league you know a reality and make it happen in uh every season from now on so yeah, I think that this would be a good transfer. Again, 10 million euros is what he's worth on transfer market. I'm going for two and a half. I mean, I would do it, but how realistic is it, right? At the end of the day, I think that's the that's the only question that you kind of have about this transfer.